Welcome to Board Game Casual. Today I thought I'd do a quick ranking and review of four new games I played for the first time this weekend. The first game we played was Flamecraft. Now, I came into this game hot. Get it? Hot? Flamecraft? Okay, never mind. This was number one on my top 10 unopened games I'm most looking forward to playing in 2024 list, and I was really excited to get this one to the table. Flamecraft is a fun little worker placement. You visit a shop, gain some resources, place cards, take some bonus actions, and the shops get more powerful and more beneficial for the next visits as a result. It's pretty easy to teach and learn, full of fun choices, but plays at a great pace and doesn't overstay its welcome. The production, even of the base game here, is great. I know a lot of the hype was around the art in this game. Candidly, that was sort of what appealed to me the least when I first saw the cover. But admittedly, once we were in the game and I could see the art on the cards and on the shops, it really won me over. It reminds me of uh, Miyazaki. The quality of the cards is really nice and it's awesome that they include player aids. The neoprene mat is really cool and makes a lot of sense for this game as you are laying out cards. I love the chunky wooden dragon meeples. I did upgrade the coins with some cheap metal coins I got off of Amazon that are a great fit. If I had one complaint, it's that the resource tokens are a bit small. I wish they just made them the size of the coins. If you're a big fan of Flamecraft, I can definitely see why getting some upgraded bits or coin capsules might be worth it. Overall, I give Flamecraft a solid eight after my initial play. I could see the possibility of this game feeling a little samey after several plays, but for now, I look forward to playing it again, especially with friends who aren't heavy gamers or when I don't feel like going through a lengthy rules teach. The next game we played was Mosaic, A Story of Civilization. Spoiler alert, this was by far the best game of the weekend. Mosaic is a civilization building game that caught my ear as I constantly heard it praised for its quick, snappy turns. At its core, on your turn, you're taking one of eight actions, and then it's right on to the next player. You can do things like expand your territory and your influence by building cities, towns, and monuments, manage military deployments, produce resources and population, or up your production ability. Mosaic was another top game on my unopened games I'm most looking forward to playing in 2024 list, so I was excited to get this one to the table as well. One of the things that kept me from pulling it out sooner was that I was really worried about getting through the rules and setup of this game. It's a bit of a slog. There's a lot of decks and tiles to organize, but honestly, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, and it was pretty straightforward. And trust me, it's worth it because once you start playing, the game itself is very straightforward. It plays smoothly, runs at a great pace, and is a ton of fun. Admittedly though, there were a few small production issues we ran into. For example, some of the wording. Throughout the instructions, it referred to production. But then we came across a card that specifically referred to the action of a production bonus. And we didn't understand what this was. There was no mention of production bonus in the rulebook, and it wasn't until we checked the BGG forums where we found production and production bonus meant the same thing. Similarly, the rules around tax, whenever a city is built, aren't very clear. There are multiple places in the rules and on the board itself that say add $10 to tax whenever a city is built. But then there are city cards themselves that say to add $10 to tax, and some city cards that don't. So we weren't quite sure if the ones that don't mean they're excluded from the tax, or if the ones that do actually require putting double the tax. Now we assumed it was the former because putting double tax seems like way too much, but let me know down in the comments if you know the right answer. There are also two types of food tokens in the game. One is wheat and one is fish. They both just represent food, but the wheat tokens represent one food and the fish tokens represent five food. But there's no numbers on the tokens, so you just have to know that fish equals five? On top of that, the port token is of a fish that says plus three, but you only get plus three food production, not three fish production, which would be 15 food. I, I don't understand the decision here because it's just confusing. 
In terms of the graphic design, some of the boxes have these gradients that bleed into the text without enough contrast, making them harder to read than they need to be. The last weird thing is that this game doesn't have a scoring track or scoring pads. So at the end of the game, you just use your phones or your own paper to tally up the scores. On one hand, I guess this means less waste. But it was kind of weird. Without a scoring pad or a player aid, you don't really know how scoring is going to work until the end of the game. Now, to be fair, these are small issues and sort of once you learn, you don't forget. They certainly don't wreck the game. By the way, I have the retail version of this game, so maybe these things are clear in the deluxe version, but still, it feels like some of these things should have been caught before going to retail. It's a shame because I have to limit my score of Mosaic to a 9, and it's purely these little production issues that are holding it back from a higher score. The game itself is so fun. There's a lot of opportunity for strategies and for your strategy to pivot or shape itself along the way. You make a lot of fun choices. It gives you moves that make you feel clever and has a really good feeling that you're progressing and advancing all while moving at such a great clip. Take an action, on to the next player. I love the pacing of this game. The third game we played this weekend was Earth. I got this game for my buddy as a gift since it seemed to be on all the top 10 games of 2023 lists. Originally based on its looks, I was ready to let this one slide by, but what sold me on it was that this game is all about players getting things and getting to do actions, even on someone else's turn. Something I really like in Space Base and Roll for the Galaxy, for example. Admittedly, on the first play, this game fell a little flat, at least compared to how much hype there is around it. Earth definitely suffers from some production issues, much more so than the small ones in Mosaic. The photography-based art does nothing for me personally, though I'm sure that's just a matter of taste. My girlfriend actually loves the art in this game. But the bigger problem is with the graphic design, which led to a lot of confusion. Like overusing the same icon to mean different things. For example, there are cards that can place sprouts and they're represented by a leaf icon in an outline of where the sprout tokens can be placed. There are also cards with powers that say you can turn in some number of leaf icons to get something else. However, in this case, the leaf icons don't mean turning in sprouts. Trading in sprouts are represented by a cube icon with no leaf. And in this case, the leaf icon is actually referring to your compost cards, which also have a leaf on them. Furthermore, the same leaf icon is used to represent points. So the bonus on this card, for example, isn't referring to three compost cards, nor three sprouts, and is instead saying three points for every two cards, not to be confused with those cards that are worth three points as per the leaf symbol in the upper left corner. This design choice makes no sense to me, and more than halfway through the game, we were trading in sprouts until we realized that it actually meant something else. Why you wouldn't use distinct icons between sprouts and compost and victory points makes no sense to me. Or at least keep the sprout icons consistent by using a leaf in a square and Put a leaf in a card shape when referring to the cards, or, or something like that. Another example was a turn that triggered the green action on all the cards. One player had a card where the green action also had an arrow next to it, but we couldn't find any mention in the rulebook about what an arrow in a green action meant. It wasn't until I posted in the forums and got a reply that we found out the arrow in fact doesn't apply to the green action at all and is actually tied to the brown action next to it. The arrows could easily be put above or below the color strip or organized in a way that wouldn't be so confusing. I just don't get it. These types of things added a lot of confusion and it seemed like they could have easily been avoided with a little more care. Even once we figured out what was actually what, we kept second guessing things, constantly having to double check the player aid, and it left a bit of a sour taste in our mouths. Production aside, in terms of gameplay, it's pretty fun. 
but there's a ton to absorb, especially in the first play. There's so much to keep track of, and things are moving so fast, it's hard to put together a strategy. At one point, I had 20 cards in my hand, and trying to understand the different attributes and how it maps to the different bonuses and turn actions, it, it just felt impossible. Even the action of picking up four cards and choosing which one to keep and which three to discard was tough because every card can be so different and there's so much information on each card. I chalk a lot of this up to the learning experience. I remember the first time I played Roll for the Galaxy, I felt the same way where it takes a couple of plays to get familiar with all the different attributes. And then once you're more familiar, it becomes easier to put together a strategy and hopefully the game will start to sing. I mean, even though my first play was so-so, at least afterwards, I was immediately realizing what I could have done better and what I would be looking for in my next play. So right now I'm giving Earth a 7.5. I thought it was okay. I'm eager to give it another try, and I'm optimistic that it'll get better with a few more plays, but we'll see. The last game we played, The Hunger, was also the biggest surprise, because I had never heard of this game until my buddy brought it over. In this game, you're playing as vampires, leaving the castle at night to hunt humans and racing back before the sun comes up. The Hunger is similar to the game Clank. It's a deck builder combined with that push your luck of getting in and out in time, else you'll lose. The high gloss board is definitely an eye catcher here and feels very high quality. Though I do wish the art had a little bit more contrast because it's really nice, but everything is so dark that things kind of blur together. The Hunger has a good amount of choices, allowing you agency of how you like to play and forming your own strategy. All three of us use different strategies, and I'm itching to play again with a new strategy I have in mind. This game reminded me of how much I like deck building games, and even though I get a lot of anxiety from these better get back in time games, I had a lot of fun. I actually like The Hunger much more than I like Clank. In Clank, I often feel like if you get stuck on a path behind another player, you're doomed because they'll get to all the loot tokens first. In The Hunger, especially with the distance-based turn order, there's much more opportunity to get loot no matter whether you're behind or in front. More importantly though, the loot tokens don't matter as much compared to your deck management and how you're using your hand. Those loot tokens might give you a little something nice, but hunting humans is where you get the big points. But humans clog up your deck, maybe not giving you as much movement, so that balance of time and movement is nice and crunchy. I was pleasantly surprised by this game and really enjoyed my play. I'm giving The Hunger an 8. I'm very eager to give it another try. If you like Clank, or even if you just like games with deck building in them, I say give this one a try. It's a lot of fun. Overall, I had a ton of fun with each of the four games I played this weekend. They are all great games, and I recommend giving them a try. To summarize and rank the four games in the order I personally liked the most, my favorite by far was Mosaic, followed by a slight edge to The Hunger Over Flamecraft, and in fourth place, Earth. Now, if you're curious, my buddy Andrew ranked them in a similar order. His favorite by far was also Mosaic, but he gave the slight edge to Flamecraft, putting it in second place, followed by The Hunger in third. Clank is one of his favorite games of all times, and he said he just prefers Clank to The Hunger. And then he put Earth in fourth place. My girlfriend, however, while she also liked Mosaic best, put Earth as her second favorite, Flamecraft in third, and The Hunger in fourth. If you've played any of these games, let me know what you think down in the comments. And let me know what you think of this type of video. I thought this would be a little more fun than a standalone review for each game. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking and subscribing. That small click means a lot to the channel. And I'll see you next time here on Board Game Casual.